you want to surprise mom with a tasty and original gift for Mother's Day, this cupcake flower bouquet is absolutely perfect. They are made of these rich chocolate cupcakes and the most creamy buttercream icing she is sure to remember. So let's make it together and be sure to keep on watching. These cupcakes make your whole house smell amazing. So if you don't want to ruin the surprise, I suggest waiting until mom is out of the house and not home. To get started, let's heat a quarter of a cup of milk in the microwave for 15 seconds. Just a little zap to make it warm. And once that's done, I'm stirring in one teaspoon of white vinegar. This is the secret ingredient for making the cupcakes super moist. You can set that mixture aside and add one tablespoon of your favorite instant coffee to some hot water. It makes such a difference and brings out all the rich chocolatey flavor. Now I'm mixing a half of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder with the coffee until it is a smooth and creamy consistency. Guys, mom will be so happy you put in all the effort to make these from scratch. Next, for the dry ingredients, measure a quarter of a cup of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Using more baking powder than baking soda is actually what gives the cake a fluffy texture. That's all part of baking science, which is always good to know. And if you enjoy watching recipe videos, make sure you click subscribe. I upload twice a week. The wet ingredients going into another bowl are half of a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, one whole egg with one yolk, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. I'm whisking this together by hand since the test recipe came out much better when I didn't use a hand mixer. Of course, there's no such thing as too much chocolate, so I'm melting a third of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips with two tablespoons of butter in the microwave for 30 second intervals until melted. Two rounds usually does the trick, and you can pour it into the wet ingredients with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. After everything is combined, sift in half of your dry ingredients, very important because we don't want any lumps, then gently fold them in and switch off to the milk, a third of a cup of sour cream, and the coffee mixture, also all half at a time. Half is our magic number today, and finish thoroughly incorporating the remaining ingredients by repeating that same process of alternating between the wet and dry. I know it sounds like a mouthful, but it's super easy when you go ahead and do it. It's almost baking time, so get your cupcake liners and place them in a 12 cup muffin pan. Make sure you only take one of each, sometimes they get stuck together, and fill each cup halfway. I like using a medium sized ice cream scoop as a guide. Try not to be tempted to overfill, half is more than enough and you can pop them in the oven to bake for 20 to 23 minutes at 300 degrees. You will see why I said these smell incredible and give them a check with a toothpick that it comes out clean. They pass the toothpick test, allow these cupcakes to cool off while we make the most perfect and creamy buttercream icing. First things first, we are creaming two sticks of room temperature butter and 227 grams of shortening in a stand mixer with a paddle attachment. I highly recommend high ratio shortening. It is a better mouthfeel as far as taste and it's easier to decorate with, but standard Crisco works if you can't find high ratio. For this part, I'm placing a shield on top of the mixer. Otherwise, there will be a snowstorm in the kitchen if you're not careful. As the mixer is on medium high, I'm gradually adding a two pound bag of confectioner sugar. You are clear to remove the shield after that. At this point, you can add whatever flavorings you like. My go-to is one tablespoon of clear vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. 
the last ingredient going in is two tablespoons of milk and give that a good whip on high to finish it off. The best thing about this buttercream rather than a pre-made icing is there is no need to adjust the consistency. It's thick and dries with a crust to keep the shape for decorating without falling off of the cupcake. And remember when you are not using the buttercream, keep it covered with plastic wrap to prevent it from drying out. Last but not least, my favorite part is the decorating. For a simple and fun daisy design, I'm taking the white buttercream with a 127 decorating tip, put that facing down and squeeze to let the frosting flow out as you move towards the center of the cupcake to form petals. I space them close together and make nine or 10. Now for the center, I melted some yellow chocolate in the microwave and painted a thin layer on a yellow candy melt, then added some yellow nonpareils while it's wet so it has that same textured look as the center of a daisy. Once it dries, you can stick it on the cupcake and there you have your daisy. To achieve a two-toned rosette, tin some icing your color of choice and also have some white buttercream handy. Using a pastry bag with a 2D tip, fill with the colored icing first, spreading it all around the bag from top to bottom. This represents the outer color and I chose a pretty peach shade which I will link down in the description box below. Next, open up your bag so you see the hole and fill the center with a generous amount of white buttercream. It's best to add more white so there is a nice contrast. We're going to pipe the icing onto a plate. It's ready when the white starts showing through just like this. It looks so cool and now I'm applying pressure until the icing starts to curl. Continue piping counterclockwise to cover the cupcake and gently pull away. The two tones make the rosette even more beautiful. These hydrangeas are made with the same two-tone technique and the same 2D decorating tip, just with purple buttercream. All you need to do is pipe until the icing fans out and gently release the pressure. This is similar to piping stars, so easy but with a dainty, delicate touch. And the last flower is a zinnia. This is a tip 104 with icing that I tinted pink. Hold your tip slanted to its side and move in an up and down motion as you squeeze. You can slightly overlap the petals all the way around into a circle and layer with more rows until the cupcake is completely covered. I love all the ruffles and topping with some edible pearls. It is completely optional to serve the cupcakes as they are, or you can assemble a DIY flower pot with styrofoam inside and stick skewers to hold the cupcakes in place. I also put leaf decorations to dress it up a little extra. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wish all moms a happy Mother's Day in advance, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.